Well, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, my friends. Welcome to Royal Priesthood Ministries. Amen. Bible study, our midweek Bible study. I am your host, Apostle John Delaware. Glory to God. Amen. We're excited about the things of God. Glory to God. We're just going to ask you to like, share. Amen. Begin to invite all your friends, all your loved ones, glory to God, to come on in. Let them know that the apostle is on. Glory to God. We have a dynamic word, glory to God, that's going to change your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It's hump day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. Yes, it's hot. It's muggy. It's humid. Glory to God. But how many of you know? We can endure such weather. Amen. We've done it before. We can do it again. So stay cool. Stay tuned in. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit has something he wants to drop in your spirit and cause you to rise above your situation. Glory to God. Amen. So come on and tell a friend. Tell a loved one. Tell an enemy. Tell a friend of me. Tell your co-workers that the apostle is on. Amen. And got a word. Amen. That ensure you victory. Hallelujah. Every time. Every day of your life. Amen. God has fully equipped us. Us. He's armed us. Amen. We're armed and dangerous. Glory to God. We're dressed to kill. Amen. When we put on the whole arm of God. And that's what we've been teaching on. Glory to God. And we want as many people to get in on this teaching as possible. Amen. The people that you pray for, the people that you're standing with. Glory to God. Amen. How many of you know you can pray all day long? Amen. But when you get through praying, they get delivered. Can they keep their deliverance? Amen. They need the whole armor of God. Amen. And as we said before, just because you're saved doesn't mean you have it on. Amen. Paul told Christians, you got to put on the whole arm of God. Amen. It's something that you have to do that God has provided for us. And so we're excited about this message. We're excited about this teaching. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Begin to tap uh, tap in on your the little at sign in your comment section. Amen. And begin to invite people. Amen. To come on in. Glory to God. Share this word. Amen. With those that you love, those that uh, you frequent, those that you have uh, influence over. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. As y'all can see, I'm wearing my little hat here. Amen. Amen. This is my hat, amen, that was given to us by Little Rock School District Superintendent, amen, who's, amen, retiring this year. And we want to say congratulations, amen, to Superintendent Poor, amen, glory to God for a job well done, amen. He's uh, uh, putting hope, amen, back in my public school system, amen, through the job that he has done and the things that he has set in place, man that cares about our students, our children, but also about our faculty and our teachers, amen. And so we, we salute you, amen, uh, I give me to call you pastor, amen, that may be your next season, amen, superintendent poor, amen, we congratulate you and we salute you, you had a, such a marvelous time, amen, out at uh, J.A. Fair today, glory to God, powerful principal, amen, uh, powerful faculty, teaching staff, and we just enjoyed our eighth graders today, we got a chance to talk about how to deal with violence, amen, how to do it. Amen. As Dr. Martin Luther King, as well as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we'll do it. Amen. And we have we had good, great participation. Amen. So we're excited about what God is doing in our city of Little Rock in Central Arkansas. Can you say Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray. Glory to God. We're going to get in the word. Amen. Let's pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name tonight. We give all glory and honor and praise to you. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for another opportunity. God, to come boldly before your throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and have grace for help in time of need. We thank you, Lord God, that you strengthen in us. You will continue to strengthen us in our inner man by your spirit. And we say thank you right now. Thank you, God, for clothing us in our right mind mind, God. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us an armor to dress in. God, thank you for this anointing, this glory that you placed upon our life. God, that we may give you glory and bring glory to your kingdom. I pray for my audience now in the name of Jesus. We pray for 100 fold hearing today. God, we pray, God, that that will be fruitfulness that comes from this word and that will be fruit that will remain. We give you all glory, give you all thanks and all praise. God, we even lift up our children, Lord God, to you, God, we stand in agreement right now that our children will rise, God, above every challenge they face, God, even the spirit of this age that's causing them to rebel and kick against the prick. God, we thank you, Lord God, even as you told Saul that it is hard to kick against the prick. And God, we thank you that it is hard. God, we thank you, Lord God, that as they kick, God, 
excuse me, as they kick, they will experience, God, the hardness of that prick in God and turn their ways unto you. God, we thank you right now. We thank you, Lord. We release our angels right now, even harvesting angels. We commission you now to go get our children. We declare household salvation in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the multitude of your kindness. Thank you for the tender mercies. Thank you for not dealing with us according to our sins or our iniquities. And we thank you, Father, for saving our children. Now, I pray again, God, that you would grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened father that we may know the hope of your calling the glory of the riches of the inheritance the god that you have in us and that we may know with a working knowledge the exceeding greatness of your power towards us god we thank you for your dunamis power thank you lord god for a revelation to operate in this power and we give you all the glory all the praise in jesus mighty name amen 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 praise the lord well let's go back to ephesians chapter 6 Amen. Verse 10. Amen. Ephesians chapter Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Amen. Where we've been studying the armor of God. We've been calling this, the uh, title of this series, Armor Up. Amen. Armor Up. It's time for the church to armor up. Amen. We got too many wounded soldiers. We have, we've been having too many casualties. Come on, somebody. Amen. And it's time for the church to armor up. Amen. The Apostle Paul admonishes us to put on the whole arm of God. Amen. We're not getting, we're not uh, satisfied with being half dressed. We're not satisfied with being uh, undressed. Come on, somebody. We need to put on the whole armor of God. Now, in verse 10, he says, finally, my brother, after I said everything in the first five chapters, amen, is in the first nine verses of this six chapters, he says, finally, my brethren, put on, be, be, he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We want to emphasize that. You cannot stand against the smoothness, the trickeries, the wiles, the schemes of the devil without this armor, without being strong in the Lord, being strong in his name, being strong in this covenant. Come on, somebody. Being strong, leaning in on that covenant, amen, and in the power of his might. He said, you will not be able, you will not have the ability to stand. Again, that's why we have so many believers, amen, uh, sometimes up, sometimes down, almost level to the ground. Why? Because we do not understand that we can do anything without God. Oh, I know we say it with our mouths. I know we say it in our praise. But when we look at our actions, when we look at our lives and how we make decisions, how we go about life, we do it without God until there's an emergency. God said, you need this every day. You need this all the time. You need to be fully equipped. Amen. Adam, before he sinned, amen, he was clothed, amen, with the glory. And we're going to get into some of that tonight. Amen. You got to understand, he was protected. And God, amen, as we were born, we received our new birth, amen, our new spirit, a new created, recreated spirit, amen. Glory to God. He says, now we have to be clothed with. Amen. We got to understand, we got to get a revelation of what's available to us to protect us. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So he says, for we wrestle not, verse 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Paul says, you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're not wrestling against men. You're dealing with spirits. You're dealing with hierarchy spirits, high-ranked spirits, amen, that are influencing people, that are influencing society, amen, that are influencing even smaller demons, even a demon of familiar spirits that are assigned to you to watch you, to understand you, to become familiar with you, to know your tendencies, to know your strengths and your weaknesses. He says these principalities, these powers, these rulers of darkness, of the darkness of this world, amen, and spiritual wickedness in high places, they're influencing these familiar spirits against you so they can weaponize you. 
Amen. I know the scripture says no weapon formed against me will prosper. But what the devil is trying to do, because he doesn't have any weaponry, he's been de-weaponized, but he's trying to weaponize you against you. So Paul says in order to stand against these things, we're going to have to have some help. Come on, somebody. Amen. We need some help. We need God's help. Can you say amen? And so he says God has given us help. He's given us his armor. But you got to be willing to put it on. You got to do what it takes to get it on. Amen. You get up every morning. You get dressed. Amen. You're willing to get dressed. Some of you may not if you don't want to go to work or go to school. Amen. But guess what? You make a decision to get dressed because it's necessary. If you leave that house, amen, you get dressed. And Paul's saying the same thing. On your on your daily routine, your daily journey in this earth, you must be equipped and armed, amen, with the armor of God. He says, because, again, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. First, verse 13 says, therefore, or wherefore, since we are warring against these spirits, he says, take unto you, he repeats himself, the whole armor of God. He could have just said the armor of God. No, he said the whole armor of God. Why? We have a tendency of have doing things when it comes to church, when it comes comes to spiritual things, when it comes to Christendom. We misunderstand the ways of God and say, well, you know, God is my protector. God is my provider. And he is. But you got to understand, he does things. Uh, according to his will and his way uh, of, of giving you that protection, of giving you that provision, and he's done it. He's given us his armor. Can you say amen? And so we have to take what he has given us. Notice Paul says, take unto you what? What God has given us. What? His whole armor, amen, that you may be able to withstand. Now he's saying you got to not only stand against and be able to stand, now you got to withstand. You got to learn to resist. Amen. The enemy, just like we're supposed to be advancing in the kingdom of God and going towards the gates of the enemy, the enemy comes against us. Amen. So we have to be able to withstand. We have to be able to resist successfully in order to win or uh, retain the victory that Jesus has already wrought on Calvary. Can you say amen? He says, take unto you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Amen. And having done all to stand, he says, do what? Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. That's the belt of truth. And having on the breast plate of righteousness. Amen. And that's where we left off last week. Amen. Teaching you on about the breastplate of righteousness. Amen. So let's get into this some more. Again, go back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He says we got to have on this breastplate. It's necessary. The truth is necessary. The belt of truth that holds all the armor together, all of this equipment, all this armor. Amen. Everything we do is based on truth. Truth is God's reality. Amen. Truth is the will of God. Amen. Truth is the will of God for your life. Truth is the will of God for the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's why he taught us to pray. Amen. That thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. What does he want? He wants the truth to be established in the earth in your life. Can you say amen? He says in verse 17 uh, of chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, he says, therefore, if any man, if any man, don't, don't care about your background, don't care where you come from, don't care what all you've done before Christ, he says, well, but if any man that be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's been recreated. He's a new species of being, according to the Greek, a new species of being that never existed before. That means my past is gone. My past is gone. That old nature is gone. Amen. What had me in bondage, what had me locked into sin and the sin nature is gone. See, I was in bondage to sin because of the sin nature. Amen. But once I was freed from the slave master of sin, which was my nature, that old man, that old nature, I'm free. I am free. Now, I have to recognize and acknowledge what Christ has done. Glory to God to walk in that liberty and walk in that freedom. 
I must have a revelation. Can you say amen? He says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new species of being. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, look, check it out, observe, acknowledge. All things are become new. Old things are gone. All things are new. Everything that's in this spirit, man, the real me is new. I'm a new me. Glory to God. And we must learn to discover the new us. Amen. We can't go by what people told us who we are. Amen. What by people opinion about us. Amen. Not even your own carnal opinion. Amen. God, the father who recreated us. Amen. He gave us a new identity. Amen. And we are teaching you about learning your new identity so you can function, glory to God, at maximum capacity according to how God has made you. He says, verse 18, and all things are of God. I don't think many people catch that. All things are of God. This is a revelation that we have to get of who we are in Christ Jesus. God made us right. He made everything that's in this new us, amen, is right. Why? Because all things are of God. Nothing is of that old nature. Nothing is of that oh, first Adam. Come on, somebody. Nothing is of your past. Amen. Glory to God. Before Christ, amen, all those things that you did, all those things that you were, they're gone. When Paul experienced his experience with the glory of God through Jesus Christ, on the road of Damascus when he was Saul, amen, God knocked him off that beast by the glory and the power of God, amen. He was transformed. He even got a new name because he had a new identity. And Paul went on to say once he got a revelation that he was new and the old things are gone, Paul said, came back and said, I've wronged no man. Now, how could he say that when his history as Saul, glory to God, was, the per was persecuting the church? Well, that was an old man. That old man died on the road to Damascus. And what I'm teaching you and telling you, that old man of yours died on Calvary. Come on, somebody. Died on Calvary, nailed to the cross. Amen. And was buried and glory to God went to hell. Amen. And was judged. You were judged. Your sins were judged in the body of Christ. Glory to God. It, will, it was judged in the body of Christ. Glory to God. And you are now free from any debt owed for your sin. For the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. How many of you know the gift of righteousness is of God? And guess what? We can experience, amen, the eternal life, the abundant life, the exoic life that God lives. Can you say amen? And so he says, all things are God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. He brought us back. He reconciled, amen, all the differences, amen, that was between us. Everything that was between us and God, God reconciled that through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no more out between man and God. Amen. Those who are born again, those who have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. He says, he's given unto us the ministry of reconciliation to wit or to know that God. Now, see, no man did this. God did this. Can you say amen? God did this. So when all those other religions try to tell you, you, you putting your trust in a man, Jesus Christ, you, that, that's a white man's gospel, that's a white man's religion, and all this stuff, and the blue-eyed devil. And, no, God did this. God came in the form of a man to redeem man, to reconcile man back to him. So when he reconciled us, watch this. Amen. Nothing stands before God that's not right. He made us right or he made us righteous. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And he says, watch this. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not counting, not accounting, not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us 
we pray you in Christ's stead, you be reconciled to God. For or because he hath made him, him Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we who knew no righteousness might be made. Catch that. We were made the righteousness of God. We were made the righteousness of God. Before we were sinners, we had a sin nature because of the first Adam. But now because of the second and last Adam, amen, we have been made righteousness. The righteousness of God, not just any righteousness, it's the righteousness of God. The same righteousness that God is and that's on God, that God is made of, that new spirit, that recreated spirit, the new us, glory to God, we are righteous. We are just as righteous as God is. Oh, don't throw nothing at me. Don't throw nothing at me. Uh-uh. We are just as righteous as God is. Why? Because we were born of God. Amen. We are born again. We are born of God. We have the same nature. We're in the same God class as our Heavenly Father is. Oh, no. We're not God. We're in the same class. Amen. Why? So we can have fellowship with him. That was the whole point in the first place. We were made right. That's all I'm trying to tell you. We were made right. There is no error in us. There are no flaws in us. Now, the way we live is a different story. And that's only because we don't have the revelation knowledge like we need to have. We are not at that maximum capacity of revelation knowledge to the fullness where we are walking in like Jesus did. But we're on our way. Come on, somebody. Amen. When you get the right teaching, amen, you'll begin to believe right. You'll begin to think right and you'll begin to do right. Amen. And it starts with knowing that you are right, not because of what you've done, but because of what God did in Christ. Hallelujah. You are made right. This is the revelation that you got to have and begin to operate in in order to don or wear the breastplate of righteousness. If you don't have this revelation, you can walk in that righteousness. And if you're not walking in that righteousness, guess what? The devil is going to have a field day on you. I must establish this in you. You got to understand. You got to have a revelation that you're right. You are made right. You wasn't made right because you did right. You are made right in order to do right. Hallelujah. Amen. We have the ability to do right because God has made us right. That's what he's trying to tell us. That's what he's trying to show us. If you, if I think I'm I'm old worm in the dust and I'm, I'm old filthy rag, guess what? That's how I'm going to live my life. That's how I'm going to treat myself. And guess what? That's how I see other people seeing me. Come on, somebody. People who are down and out in the muller grubs that have done wrong and messed up. Now the world beating them over, the devil beating them in the head, bringing condemnation. Well, they live their life according to how they perceive themselves. And so that is not the truth, amen, for their lives, especially those who are backslidden but are still part of God's uh, family. Come on, somebody. They need this word of reconciliation that you and I possess. Can you say amen? He says, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. We were made right. Watch this. When something is made right, amen, it is expected to function right or righteously. I'm going to say that again. When something is made right, it is expected to function right or righteously. God made us right, so his expectation of us is to act right. It's to operate right, to function right. You don't get your car fixed, amen, and then expect for it to still uh, run raggedy, amen. You, fix, you get it fixed so it can run right, or it can run righteously, glory to God, amen. A new car, you expect it to run righteously or right, why? Because it's new, and you expect the, for the maker to make it right. Well, God made us right, and we have the ability to act right. We have the ability to function right. What does that look like? It looks just like Jesus. 
the way Jesus operated, the way Jesus handled the devil, the way Jesus Jesus handled temptation, where where Jesus handled sickness and disease, the way Jesus handled uh, lack and poverty. Amen. That's what functioning right looks like. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus was not condemned by anything. Though the Bible says he was tempted in all points as we were, yet without sin. Why? Because he understood who he was. He knew he was the Christ. He knew he was the Son of God. He knew he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He knew he had acted right. Amen. He knew he was made right. Come on, somebody. So he behaved right. Hallelujah. When you think you're a certain way, you behave according to how you think. Listen to this. The reason God commands us to be perfect as he is perfect. That's what the word says. Amen. He is only expecting that because he knows that he has made us with perfection. Amen. God made us with perfection. Amen. This new created spirit, glory to God. The Bible says we were created in righteousness and true holiness. This new, this new man, this spirit man was created in righteousness and true holiness. Watch this. Then it was, it was born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. The word is incorruptible. It cannot be dumbed down. It cannot be changed. It cannot be deviated. It cannot, it cannot be uh, uh, diminished. Amen. You, you can't make it lesser because it's already in its truest natural or supernatural, however you want to say it, form. It cannot be breaking, broken down. Glory to God. It is what it is. It is the truth. Amen. And we were made, we were created out of the word of God. Y'all better catch this. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you got victory over everything because you were created on a higher level than everything. The word created everything that exists. I said the word created everything that exists. You were born. Your very nature is the word of God. Hallelujah. You are born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. And so God expects us, I mean, to continue to move towards perfection in our living as we ascertain and gain revelation knowledge of who we really are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I know there's some strong teaching, amen, because when you come, when you look at, uh, at, uh, at, at, at what religion has taught us, amen, it's, it, it it kind of jerks the slack out of you. It, amen. It, 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 it changes your thinking. It challenges your thinking. Amen. Because you heard for a long time, oh, we all sin. We ain't gonna never, we ain't gonna never reach perfection. Amen. Until we get to heaven. No, you as perfect as you're gonna be. <laughs> but your your life you live isn't. Amen. But who you are is. And that's what you got to recognize even before you move forward into perfecting the things, amen, that's in your life. You got to know who you are. You are as perfect as you are going to be. Your life you live is a different thing. It's a different story. We talk, we're not talking about your actions. We're talking about who you are. Your actions will change when your revelation of who you are change. Hallelujah. Amen. It's no different than a child getting, getting adopted. We get, we've been adopted to the royal family. Amen. And before we were a pauper, amen, we got adopted naturally in the, in, in the natural sense of the word for, to a royal family in the natural realm. Glory to God. We will have to adapt to the nature and to the culture, amen, and to the protocols of royalty. That's what God is trying to show us, y'all. That's what he's trying to teach us, amen. Our righteousness brings us royalty, amen. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I want you to understand, amen, we're just not talking religion, amen. We're talking relationship. We're talking reality. Glory to God. You are right because God made you right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the only reason we don't act right and we don't live right or we don't live perfect lives is because of operator error. Somebody say operator error. Amen. It's not because you're not right. You were created to do right. You were created, amen, right to, to do right and to act right. Amen. It's now because of not renewing your mind to know how this new creation is and how we operate in it, it's operate error. 
Ain't nothing wrong with you. <laughs> I said, there's nothing wrong with you because God made you. Amen. And when God makes something, he makes it right. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Paul says it like this. If we live according to the flesh, if we walk in the flesh, amen, we'll, we'll be condemned. That's in Romans 8. You can write that down. We won't go to that. Amen. But again, we are functioning or malfunctioning, amen, in this, in this and with this recreated righteous, amen, new man, righteous spirit only because of operator error. Amen. And we operate this thing not according to the spirit. We operate it according to our flesh or our fleshly mind. Paul said it like this. Paul said, if we walk in the spirit, amen, we will not be condemned. Again, Romans 8. We walk in the spirit. We will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. There is no condemnation for those who walk not, who walk not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Another way of saying that, the real you, which is spirit, when you are renewing your mind and you learn to follow the Holy Spirit and you've learned to follow the voice of even your own spirit, you're walking in the spirit. And there, there is no condemnation. But when you walk in the flesh, what happens? Condemnation comes because of sin. That's the job of sin, it, and that's the nature of sin. It automatically brings condemnation. 90% of the body of Christ, amen, is walking in condemnation. 90%. Why? Because we don't know who we are. Amen. The minute we mess up, we think we're going to hell. We think God is mad at us. We think God is waiting to get us. No, we are his children. Amen. You are not a better parent than God. Amen. You're not always waiting on your children to mess up and you got a bat waiting on them. Hello, somebody. Well, God is a better father. God is a better mother. God is a better parent than you are. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so he's not condemning us. He's not mad at us. Matter of fact, he promised, amen, prophetically through Isaiah in Isaiah 54. He said, never again will I be wrought with thee. That means I will never again be angry. That's a strong word. That's a strong promise. That's a strong prophetic word. Even all the mess we do, all the stuff we get in, God would, would make that amen statement and then we'll have to back it up and cannot back off of it because he knew what he was creating. He was creating a new man. Come on, somebody. He was creating us in righteousness and true holiness. Glory to God. He was going to have him a people that will be led by the Spirit of God because his word will be in our hearts and will be in our minds where we could follow after his heart. Come on, somebody. That's why he recreated us and he made us right. I'm telling you, this is what putting on the breastplate of righteousness is 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 getting hold of a revelation of righteousness and who we are and understanding that we are made righteous and so we have the ability to walk in that righteousness and resist the enemy when he shoots those condemnations at us he does it all the time even when we mess up amen again our life is the life we live is not perfect God is perfecting those things which concern us. How does he per perfect them? Again, revelation knowledge. He's given us wisdom and understanding and revelation knowledge of who we are, how we're to function, glory to God, who we are in Christ, and begin to walk in that. That's how he perfect those things concerning us. He's not waving a wand and perfecting those things. No, we're walking this thing out. Hallelujah. Paul said it like this in Thessalonians. You have to walk out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. See, we express life through our soul. And when our soul is renewed through the word of God, then our soul can submit itself to the spirit man. Glory to God who is led by the spirit of God. Amen. And we can walk in perfection or walk perfect toward the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody said there is hope. Amen. Where is that hope? It's in Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Again, so we must understand we cannot 
amen, lean on our fleshly mindset because it only brings condemnation. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me run on. Amen. I wanted to get further than this. Notice this. Here's what you need to understand. Religion says we are sinners saved by grace. Now, I'm trying to help your, your thinking <coughs> so you can think righteously. Amen. We've been taught we are sinners saved by grace. That's what religion teaches. The, but the word doesn't say that. The word says we were sinners saved by grace. We were sinners, but we got saved by grace. Once you save, you're saved from a sin nature. You're saved from a sin nature that whereas you were you were you were you were uh, you were you were prone to sin automatically. You could not help it. Amen. You could not help but to sin because that was your nature. But we are saved from that. God rescued us from that. God delivered us from that. Glory to God. To where we don't have that nature anymore. Therefore, we have a choice of whether to sin or not. Hello, somebody. Amen. Sin is a choice. Before, it was by force. Amen. We were forced to sin by that nature. But now it's a choice. Amen. Why? Because we're righteous now. Now we can choose to sin and we can choose not to sin. We have that ability. That's the way this new nature is made. You don't have to sin. Amen. It gives you the ability to choose. It gives you the ability to choose what is right. Because right is in you now. Hallelujah. I said right is in you. You ever heard somebody say there ain't nothing right in that joker? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, in us it is. Because Jesus in us, the greater one is in us, the Holy Spirit is in us, God the Father himself lives in us, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light is in us, so it's a lot right in us. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to tell you tonight, you are right because you are made right. Hallelujah. Now you got to learn to function right. Amen. And when we renew our mind and get out of the fleshly mindset, we won't have operator error. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look, look at this again. Our status, amen, we're no longer sinners because we got saved by grace. Now we're right, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. That means our state of being or our status has changed. Now we ain't talking about behavior, amen. Behavior comes uh, as a byproduct of our nature. Amen. Our behavior comes by byproduct of our nature and what we believe. Amen. If we believe that we are right because God made us right, we'll start acting right. Amen. Amen. We'll behave according to how we see ourselves. I was made right. So guess what? I got the ability to act right. Come on, somebody. He says, watch this. God says, telling us our status has changed. Why? Because we have a new state of being. Religion tells us or says that we are filthy rags. And people see that. They see themselves as filthy rags. When they mess up, oh, I'm just old filthy rag anyway. We got a lot of believers, Christians, preachers. They all say the same thing. They say, we, we number filthy rags in the eyes of God. That's not true. We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God looks at us through the blood of Jesus, that blood that's poured out on that mercy seat, amen, in the tabernacle of heaven. God looks through that blood. He sees his son, glory to God, and he sees righteousness. Can I tell you, when you have on the full armor of God, amen, I got to move on. When you have on the full armor of God, amen, the spirit realm, glory to God, they don't see you. They don't see the natural you. They don't see the weak you. Come on, somebody. They don't see the black you, the white you, the red you. Amen. The, the fallible you. They see the anointing of Jesus Christ. Why? Because that, that anointing is on that armor. The glory is on that armor. Can you say amen? Amen. So we got to stop listening to religious people who's given us erroneous teaching. Amen. That's why the gospel is called the good news. Amen. The way we preach the gospel sometimes is bad news. Amen. That's why the world don't want it. Amen. If, it, if we act the same way, we believe the same way, why would they want something like that? Amen. No, the gospel is a whole lot better than what we've been preaching. 
Hallelujah. And it sure is a, not, a lot better than what we've been living. Hello, somebody. No, Jesus came and took away all the sin, all the sin nature. Hallelujah. So we can live right. Religion says we are filthy rags. Watch well, this. But the word says our righteousness, which means our own works and our own good behavior, is still as filthy rags. He never called us filthy rags. He called the works that we would try to perform to be right. No, 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 no. You can't do anything to be right. You have to be made right in the eyes of God. Amen. See, they tried that under the old law. They tried to keep the old law. Amen. No, 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 no. It, it never sufficed. Amen. That's the best that God could give unto Jesus, till he could get Jesus here. Come on, somebody. But now that we have Jesus, now we are righteous. Hallelujah. Now, our very nature is righteous. Glory to God. And, uh, it's, our, it's our own effort, our own works. When you try to make that right, he said it still comes up as filthy rags but he never called us filthy rags amen so we must rightly divide the word of truth listening to religious erroneous teaching will convince you that you are unrighteous when jesus made you right that's the whole point jesus made you right you couldn't get right i couldn't get right we couldn't we can't do enough to be right he had to make us right when you start walking in that revelation with that understanding and begin to stand against the wiles of the devil, even when you mess up, I'm still God's child. I'm still God's son. I'm still God's daughter. He's still my daddy, even though I mess up. Why? Because your behavior does not change your status. Your behavior does not change your state of being. Even when you tried to act right, it didn't make you righteous. It did not change your state of being. Watch this. Now that you are righteous and when you mess up, it does not change your state of being. Are there consequences for your behavior? You better know it is. Glory to God. But it does not change your status with God. You're still God's son and daughter. You got to walk in that revelation to dawn or to have on the breastplate of righteousness. If not, the enemy is going to eat your lunch. His job is to try to get you condemned. Because if you get condemned, amen, that means you're no longer useful. Amen. A condemned house means that, that house is no longer livable. When he condemns you in your conscience, that means you'll stop on God. You'll stop using your faith. You'll feel bad. Amen. You'll, you'll look down on yourself. You'll see stuff and see people through the eyes of a condemning spirit. And next thing you know, you're critical about everything. You're, you're, you're a pessimist. Amen. You, you're bitter and you're angry. He want to lead you through all of that. What is he doing? Trying to get you to get undressed. He's trying to get you to lay down that armor. That's all he's trying to do. Why? Because he cannot stand up against it. Amen. That's why he comes as a thief. He cannot stand against this armor if you put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because it's the anointing and the glory of God. Hallelujah. It's the anointing and the glory of God. Hallelujah. See, there is no word of condemnation, no false accusation, no false allegation, no guilty thought will penetrate your heart or lodge in your mind when you're walking in your breastplate of righteousness. And so that's what he's trying to keep you from getting. That's why he bombards your mind. He, he strikes and strikes and strikes again. That's the very name of the devil. One that strikes and strikes and strikes again until he penetrates your mind and bring condemnation and guilt against you. Can you say amen? Glory to God. But guess what? We're not going to expose ourselves to the devil. We're going to learn to walk in our righteousness. We're going to keep our breastplate on, locked into the truth. See, it's the truth of God, amen, that you need, amen, to understand that you are made right. It's not by what I say. It's not by what your pastor say or, no, or what anybody else say. It's what's the, what the word says. He said, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the very nature of God. I'm the very stuff that God is made of. Glory to God. And when I learn to live from the inside out, glory to God, this outer man has to submit, amen, to that inner man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Amen. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to make some ground. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. He says, for if by one man's offense, talking about the first Adam, death reigned by one. How did that happen? How one man can mess up everything? Because we were all in Adam. All of mankind was in Adam. You remember, everything produces after its kind. Amen. So by one man, he messed up mankind. The Bible says death reigned. Death ruled. Amen. By one man. Watch this. He didn't stop there. But he says, much more, I need y'all to say much more, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? that? Paul laid that out so plain. He says, when we receive Jesus Christ, we receive the abundance of grace. See? Where there's sin, there's much more grace. So God don't just do an even exchange. Uh uh. He super abundantly pardons us. In other words, we're not just forgiven just to start over. We're forgiven and glory to God. He gives us some advantage to get started. In other words, we're a long way from where we ended up at before we met Jesus. Hallelujah. He put us so far ahead of the game. Hallelujah. That's abundant grace. It's kind of like if, you, if you're in prison, amen, and you serve your time and you get out and all they give you is the clothes on your back, maybe $20, $30, $40, amen, to get some transportation, amen, to, to make it where you, go, you need to go or, you know, somebody, of course, may pick you up. Amen. See, that's not abundant grace. Amen. That's just grace. Now you're out. You did your time. Maybe you got out a little early for good behavior. That's just grace. Watch this. But abundant grace is when you get out early, they guarantee you a job. They recommend somebody to you and you go see them. Hey Amen. They already got a job for you. They give you a car. They give you a place to live. Somebody said that's abundant grace. I know there's a lot of fellas, amen, who go to God that's gotten out of prison, wish they had something like that. Well, that's what God did, did for us, amen. He didn't just get out of, out of, get us out of prison, amen. He gave us royalty, hallelujah. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. Why? Because that's the kind of God we serve. Paul says here, much more, which, much more they which receive. See, we got to receive it. Amen. We got to receive. We can only receive what we have knowledge of. We have to receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Then he says, we'll reign. We'll rule in life. See, the body of Christ is not ruling. Amen. Because we too condemn. We hadn't received this gift of righteousness. We still think we're filthy rags. We still think we're sinners saved by grace. No, if you saved, you ain't a sinner no more. You may commit a sin or several sins, but your nature is not sin. Your nature is not a sinner. Your identity is no longer a sinner. You are a Christian. You are a believer. You are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. You are a child of God. You are children of light. And you must walk in that revelation. You must begin to believe that and think that so you can behave that way. Hallelujah. And when you behave that way, Again, it constitutes you walking with the breastplate of righteousness. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So this verse is really saying here, a believer, when a believer finally grabs hold of the truth that God has graciously imparted righteousness to him, that knowledge changes him. Hallelujah. Knowledge changes changes you revelation knowledge changes you what happens you begin you get an attitude of righteousness watch this that will profoundly affect your prayer life amen if you don't know that you are have right standing with god you cannot pray with confidence amen john said this is the confidence that we have when we pray according to his will he we know he hears us how can I have that confidence? 
starting with the truth. The truth is he made me right. No matter what somebody says about me, my daddy says I'm right. See, it ain't about what you say. It's about what God says. I'm going to say about me what God has said about me. God said I'm the righteousness of him in Christ Jesus. Then that's who I am. Hallelujah. And that settles that, baby. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, let's look. We got to finish this up. Amen. Satan wants to talk you out of your identity. He want to talk you out of righteousness. He want to talk you out of your identity. It ain't nothing new. It's the same old game he played, amen, with Adam and Eve, amen, in the beginning. Let's go there. In Genesis chapter 3, amen, hallelujah. He wants to get you to undress or de-weaponize you from your armor, get you undressed so you can be exposed to all his wiles and his schemes. Remember the devil, uh, remember the Bible says, Paul said earlier, that we got to put on the whole armor of God. Why? That we may be able to stand against the wiles and the trickeries of the devil. This armor is necessary. He wants to undress you, amen, by condemning you and lying to you, challenging your identity, not letting you understand and know that you are already made right. Hallelujah. There's nothing you can do to get right before God. Your righteousness, your works is as filthy rags when it comes to the righteousness of God. God has to make you right and he has made you right if you're born again. Notice in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. That word subtle means smooth as butter. He was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, you see him throwing a question in there, questioning her identity, questioning what God has really already said to them. He says, and, and woman, he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of the tree, or eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god has said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it otherwise or lest you die and the serpent said unto the woman you shall not surely die there you go changing what god said challenging what god said challenging the truth he says for God know, God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now watch this. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. <clears throat> and gave also unto her husband <clears throat> with, with her, and he did eat. And watch this. And <clears throat> excuse me. And the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So now it sounds like the devil was telling the truth. But he was lying. What he did, he challenged God's authority, he challenged God's word, and he distorted Eve's revelation of really what God said. God said, when God created man, he did what? He created man in the image and the likeness of God. The likeness of God, <clears throat> which means we were just like God. Adam was just like God. He, could, he already knew good and evil. But what happened was Adam had the ability to discern good and evil without being able to see it from a fleshly realm, from his physical eyes. Catch that. He challenged Eve with this question, again, suggesting that she and Adam were not like God when God made them in the image and likeness of him. What did he do? He penetrated her mind and lured them into eating of the forbidden tree. All because she didn't know her identity. 
if she knew that she knew that she knew she was just like God, she never would have considered it. How does the devil come? He comes in three realms. He comes with the temptation, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Notice what the scripture says in verse uh, 6. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, lust of the flesh, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, the pride of life. As he's going to come in those three realms. No matter what, no, how, no matter how he disguises it, he's only going to come in those three realms. That's why you got to have the truth and have to have a revelation of the truth. You got to know who you are and what God has said about you and do not deviate one iota from what God is saying. And so watch this. After sinning, watch this, their eyes came open, watch this, but it came open to the flesh realm. Adam could already see, but he was operating in the glory realm, the same realm that God was operating in. Amen. And the Bible says they noticed that they were naked. Some preacher said, I've said it too, didn't not know and understand it. Well, he was already naked. He was just clothed with the glory. Wherever he was clothed, he was clothed. Amen. He was not naked. He was clothed. They had to make themselves, first time making clothes, they made themselves an apron out of fig leaves. Why? Because now they, they're stuck in this new realm, this flesh realm. Glory to God. And now they see and now they'll know good and evil based on carnal fleshly knowledge. That was not the will of God. God understood good and evil. They, they would have understood good and evil based on discernment. Now we as mankind, we understand good and evil based on experience. God never wanted us to experience evil, amen, on this level. Amen. We are to discern that it was evil and to stay away from it. She should have and Adam should have discerned. God said don't eat it. He should have discerned that eating it was evil. He didn't have to experience to find out it was evil. Now we are experiencing a world full of knowledge of good and evil based on fleshly carnal knowledge. But the Bible promises us, watch this, in Isaiah that in the end the earth is going to be filled, watch this, with the knowledge of the glory of God. We're going to have revelation knowledge based on the glory realm, not based on this natural carnal flesh. That's why we keep failing. We try to understand, to understand, amen, who we are, amen, from a natural standpoint. We try to understand spiritual things with a natural mind. We try to understand God and God's ways with a natural mind. We, we try to understand the, the trials, the, the things that we go through with a natural mind. And Paul said the natural mind cannot understand these things. It cannot cross over because the natural mind is enmity or an enemy against God. It cannot cross over. It cannot understand. You have to have the mind of Christ, a spiritual mind, a mind that is influenced by your spirit man, the renewed man, the man that is full of righteousness. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Man, I'm out of time. Hallelujah. So let's, let's sum this up. So in this new covenant, you have a manual of how this new creation works, how it is made, how it has unlimited potential in its functionality. Amen. You got to get a revelation, amen, that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation unto God. We are children of light, amen. Our royalty is the righteousness and the glory of God. Hallelujah. Our royalty is the righteousness and the glory of God. This is what makes us holy. This is what makes us royalty. This is what makes us kings and priests. We must catch that revelation of righteousness and put on our breastplate 
of righteousness. Can you say amen? Glory to God. I had to finish that up. I, I, man, I ran out of time, but glory to God. I thank God for yours. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Listen, let's uh, prepare our hearts to sow. Let's prepare our hearts to give. Amen. Tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Name your seed when you give. There's several ways you can give. You can give by cash app. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I done preached myself happy. I think I'm going to send myself an offering. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You got several ways you can give. You can give by uh, give uh, Givelify. Amen. As well as Venmo. That's at Royal Priesthood. Amen. Uh, LR. You can give by Cash App. That's dollar sign Royal Priesthood. LR. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're mailing your checks or money orders in, amen, make them out to Royal Priesthood Ministries or RPM. That's P.O. Box 1666. 33 Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Obey God. Amen. Glory to God. So, so where you want to go. You got a future. Amen. Glory to God. When you got seed in the ground. Amen. You always have seed. You always have a future. Amen. When you got seed in the ground. You always have something to expect. From the kingdom of God when you sow in the kingdom of God. Don't put all your, amen, your money in the stock market. Don't put all your money in the bank. Amen. You're making money for the bank. Amen. Glory to God. Put your money in the kingdom of God where it produces 30, 60, and 100 fold, even a thousand times more. Glory to God. Obey God this evening. Hallelujah. No gift is too large. No gift is too small. Amen. Just obey God. What the Spirit of God is telling you to give. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Also, don't forget, amen, hallelujah, our family motif, amen, that's coming up on June 24th and June 25th. Amen. The family is in trouble. Amen. Glory to God. And we got we got to get God's design of the family established again, first in the body of Christ, amen, and then in our world. Amen. The, 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 the design of the family is disoriented. Amen. And this conference is, is designed, amen, to pull the families back together. Amen. And get things back in order. Amen. Again, that's June 24th and 25th. June 24th is the evening. Amen. That starts at 7 p.m. And Saturday morning starting at 10 a.m. Glory to God. Yours truly will be teaching on that Saturday morning. Amen. Glory to God, returning back to the Father. It's going to be powerful. Amen. And we want everyone to attend. More, more information is going to be coming out uh, concerning that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So make sure. Hallelujah. Amen. You uh, grab hold of that information. Well, lift your hands and let me bless you real good. Glory to God. Amen. You've been a wonderful, wonderful audience, wonderful class. Amen. And my, my desire, amen, that, that fruit, amen, will come from this word and that fruit will remain. So let's lift your hand before the Lord. Let me bless you. Father God, I bless the people of God. I declare shalom over their lives. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. I declare a well prosperous journey for the rest of our time in the earth. I declare that the favor of God is on us. The favor of God surrounds us. The favor of God follows after us. And the favor of God shows up for us every time. In Jesus name, amen. God bless you. We love you. Go take dominion.